This is Sharon A.K. Harris with another fun project. Hello everybody. So today we're going to be doing a beautiful fat cat right there. That's what we're going to do today. And I'll be showing you other items as well, but I want to show you how to make the paper itself first. So we're going to be using Tim Holtz cardstock and it's glossy and it gives a really nice effect. You'll never know what you're going to get, but it's so much fun to make paper. You can also use some of the papers in your stash. See how glossy that is. But uh, it's way more fun to even make more paper. So I'm going to spritz on my, my craft sheet, which if you don't got one, you need to get one. These are awesome. I'm going to put a little sepia down and a little Sunday's archival inks is what I'm using. And I just want to spritz it one more time. And you know about this, how to make papers and such things, but I like to kind of goof around a bit. So give you ideas. So I get this on here and I like to give that a spritz once it dries. I'm going to put a little more brown, which is sepia I'm using. And I want to put a little of the magenta it's called magenta hue. Ooh, that came out big. I don't want too, too much, but I want some. So I'm gonna just spritz it. And I'm gonna put some of the darker browns in here. And I got the magenta in there, but that's for sure. Let's put some of that on the edge. Let it, let it drip. I love doing that, don't you? And then take your brush and just play with it a little bit. You don't have to do everything schmishy. It's fun to get smeary, but it's fun to get playing. Now I'm gonna just spritz my paper and see what happens. And I just kind of pull, wiggle. You can even use your, your uh, bottle and put designs in it if you wish. And because it's so juicy, you never know what you're gonna get but it's really pretty and it's another texture. I mean, you could even use this side and you get little half moons and such things. Then give it a spritz, give it a blot and bring it around. Take some off your board here and just bring it around and get another texture. So it's all about playing. Isn't it fun to play? I think so. I think I'd like a little bit of yellow again. Just put a little of that out, sun dazed. Wash my brush. Just give that a little spritz. Put some yellow in here. So you can manipulate where you want your yellow to go. You can just let it be free form. It's just a matter what you like. Maybe put little swirls. Now, so since we're doing a big fat cat, I'm keeping in mind the textures of fur, maybe lines because it's a tiger kitty, I'm thinking. But your cat can be anything. But I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut these out like we do paper dolls. So, and I'll be showing you that. But I just wanted to show you how I make my paper. And I would use even my leftovers from other projects like I have a lot of um, texture paste I've used, Ranger texture paste. You could use that in this and have more texture. So don't be afraid to try things. Look how beautiful that paper looks. I'm gonna give it another spritz. And then I'm gonna blot. There, now I'll clean off my board. It's that easy. That's why I love this craft sheet. I can't say enough about it. So anyway, Without further ado, let's carry on and make a big fat cat. Pretty, isn't it? We're gonna be doing a, a collage of a big fat cat. And I thought we'd put it in our journal. And I love journaling because you can keep all your ideas and your thoughts in there. So it's always a great way to go back for reference plus see your beautiful artwork and always take it out and make a card so let's get going 
just to give you an idea of all the things you can do. Uh, as you see, this is my journal for, for ideas. And here's a big fat cat, potty time. Here's one with some catnip and he's a big fatty. So you're gonna be able to manipulate them to do all kinds of things. So I drew a little sketch out and I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do. We're gonna cut out pieces of our, of our cardstock and um, we're gonna put them in our journal like this, but I'm gonna show you how you can manipulate it. Let's say you decided, oh, I want them to hold a bag. I mean, it's easy enough to do. You just, it's almost like playing with paper dolls. I and mean, who didn't love doing that? You just bring his little face down. And then I draw in a lot of the other pot, which is real easy, it's just triangles. But anyways, little ears. Let's say I want him to look in this direction to the right. All I do is move things over, maybe put this arm behind and bring the arm over. So you can see how easy it is to manipulate it and get crazy ideas and, and be funny and funky with them because it's a whimsical piece. So basically we're just gonna cut out a bunch of ovals a couple of smiles, right? Look, look at it. it's nothing but a big fat smile. His tail is a big fat smile and a couple of triangles. So you can do that. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to draw it out. I was having fun with this with the cat's eyes all around him. So anyway, we're gonna carry on. This is a four and a half by five and a half sheets. So I just cut out a piece of cardstock just to draw on and I'm just gonna make a big fat teardrop shape kind of thing. You don't have to make it a teardrop. It can be a little more ovally, but it's just, I'm trying to break it down to simple shapes. And a couple little ovals for feet. Remember, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same. A couple of smiles, right? Just smiles, big fat smiles. We're not being perfect. We're gonna have fun. Another smile here. Now, if you wanted to, you could get real fancy and get little feats on them, that's up to you. I'm trying to keep it really simple and, you know, make it easy. Big fat tail coming up a little bigger at the beginning and let it be smaller and just go over those lines because we're gonna use this just as a, uh, something to trace with if you need it or you can cut them out. And I'll show you that. And then I'm gonna put a big face in here. So a nice big oval. That's kind of big, so I'll bring it down. You know, always keep an eraser on hand. You can always change your mind. And we can put big cat ears. You see is that? And then we're gonna do another little oval here for his little muzzle, because I think it's cute. And I'm gonna put a little lump on the bottom of that. So it's kind of like an oval with another it's like almost like a um, a hat shape. You see that with a straight on the top and a hat. Okay, so that kind of helps you keep it where you can draw, where you don't have to think, oh my God, I can't draw. But you can, you can draw little smiles and everything. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's whimsical. Now the eyes, we will just draw them in, but you can do eyes and there's, there is a technique for that. If you're gonna do eyes, just draw a line. Now this would be his muzzle, his nose would be like this, and a line down, and a little smile, because we like happy kitties. And then the eye is basically a triangle, like diamond shape. And if you make them higher on the side, they get sinister looking, and I'll show you that, just so you'll see. So let's say it's Halloween and you want a black cat and you might want it to look a little crazy. So just put your, make it come up. You see how sinister that looks compared to this cute little kitty eyeball there. So it's up to you what you want. But the higher the eye comes, a little bit uh, sinister it gets. Okay, so that gives you a little lesson on that. So we're gonna draw those in after just to make Make it easy. And um, so this is my pattern. I'm all set. I got an idea, you know, just a couple of little shapes. And if you feel f 
uh, handy enough and, 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 and confident enough, you can draw them straight on here. But I, you can also take this paper and put it on top with tracing paper. And this one I'm just going to trace out. I think I can indent it enough, but I'm just going to trace it out onto this paper. And I, let it go over. That's okay, because this is just our... It's paper dolls. And so I'm going to take that off and see what I got. Can I see it just with pressing down? And I can, just with pressing down. You can see the embossed area. So I'm going to cut that out with a pair of scissors. Easy peasy. Just keep turning it and you will see your your line show up. Unless you want, you can do, uh, like I said, you can do transfer paper and copy paper, but I'm too lazy. If I can find a way to do it quick, I'm doing it. Okay, now I'd like a couple of little feet. And so I'm gonna use these lighter areas because I think that would look really cool. So all I have to do is, I'm just gonna, actually I could just draw them, but I'm just gonna trace them. So basically an oval and an oval. It doesn't have to be the same size, it just has to, the approximate. So let's see what I got. And sure enough, that embossed area shows up. Can you see it? I hope you can. Let me see. So you can see the embossed area does show up quite nicely. So you don't really need tracing paper and all that, but you can if you want to. Now you could just cut one foot out and just tr and just you know trace that and do it again, or you could even fold your paper probably in half. But I don't want any bends in it because I might use it for other things. So anyway, I'm just cutting it out and cutting this one out. Now turn your paper. It's easier than. It's the easiest way to cut. Okay, so here we go. We got two little foots, and it doesn't matter. They could be dancing. He could have one behind, you know, whatever. Whimsical, keep it whimsical and keep it sweet. Okay, I'm liking that a lot. Now let's do a face, and I'm using another piece of paper. And this time I'm just gonna trace out his head. And the reason why I'm using all these different papers is because I want to make sure that the colors are always a little different and off, and I think that's really nice. So I'm gonna cut that out again. You can see the embossing area. So there's his little head. Let's make them a couple of ears. I think I like this color. Eh, maybe something darker. Yeah, darker would be good. And all they are is two triangles. If you want, you can just trace again. And I don't really care about them coming down lower because we can manipulate them. So I'd rather make them a little bigger. And this one's gonna have to go to a different spot. Okay, make them bigger at the bottom so they can tuck behind. And I can see that nicely. So you get the idea on how to cut a little kitty ear. It just goes to show how little you can do to make something look really pretty cool. Now I'm just looking at the value changes, and I want a value change here for his muzzle, but not too much. So I'm gonna go with this little one right here and just do another oval. Sometimes I like to manipulate it a little more when it's in my hand. I just wanna make sure that it's ovally shaped. So you can manipulate it. You can do whatever you want. All right, so I like that up here. And it's already starting to come together. So let's make a couple of arms. So now I'm just repeating what I've been doing. 
but I'm cutting out all the arms and the tail and so forth. So I'll just put that on fast forward so you can see me doing it. And then I'll pick up after that. Nina Wakely journal and it's very heavy paper. I really love this journal. I can't say enough about it. Here's the one we did, but uh, unfortunately something happened to my video. So I'm doing another video to show you how I attach everything and do a background. So I'm still working with the archival inks on this one and I'm gonna put a little drop out and you could use all kinds of wonderful products that Ranger makes, but I'm just gonna use the archival yellow and I'm just gonna put it on my brush and tap. And just putting in background now. And just spattering. I'm not getting too carried away. You can even paint with this. I don't know if you knew that. You can just paint away and on the paper. I know a lot of people don't use paint because it absorbs and it becomes, you know, it's hard to blend and everything, but if you do the different materials that um, the Ranger has, it's really quite easy, but they makes a nice way to outline and get your sketches in there and get your ideas across. I mean, look how cute is that already? I know it's darker under his head, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, let's get back to this, and I want to show you how I start attaching it. I'm going to use today Glossy Accents. Uh as a glue because it works really, really, really good. And it's handy for me, it's right here. So first thing I like to do is put on his on his body, is his belly, and I kind of do it in the middle because this way it can smear, but I can shove things in on the top and on the bottom. And I know I want his body right around in this area, off center a little bit. I'll even smush it back and forth a little bit so it sticks well. And then I'm gonna put his little head on and again, same thing see what side oh i kind of like that side looks good see i sometimes do both sides of my paper <laughs> this one here is um alcohol ink so it's done on uh upo paper not on the cardstock so you see it's not as shiny where the cardstock is really shiny i think i like it better on the cardstock but it, everyone has their own taste. And I'm gonna put my ears on next. Attach that. I wanna put them underneath, cause that way it has a little more depth. That's what's kind of fun about doing these collages. You can manipulate things, change things around a little bit. And you're not stuck for, if, you know, you don't have two seconds to get it on there. You get plenty of time. And that one on there, just making sure that my ears are approximately in the right spot. And smear it around and it smears for you. That's really good. Now I want to put the muzzle on. And that's very cute. And I want to figure out where I want my tail. I want my tail to point to the kitty's head. So that means I want to bring my arms down a little bit. And I didn't give this much time to set, but it'll be fine. Okay, so that's good. And I want to put my cattail on. And we'll have it point to his head which kind of is my center of interest is going to be its head. And, oh, that's not a, this is his muzzle. I put his foot on there. See, we all make mistakes. Not a big deal. You fix it. One foot there, let's make them dancing. 
put one up on the up on an angle. I think it looks kind of cute. All right, so there's his two little feet. He's like a dapper kind of a kitty on this one. They're all different, which is so cute. And these are make, like I said, great birthday cards. And because they're all little bits of paper, it makes it even more interesting and it gives them a lot of texture. Put it in his face. So I'm gonna do, take the um, foo ball and I'm just gonna make a triangle. Oops, it's still wet. Triangle for the nose. And a little smile. And then I want his, his nose is going to be kind of coming up like that. No big deal. Don't try to be perfect. And then I'm going to put my little triangles. But remember, keep your triangle down and you'll have a nice sweet kitty. If you want a Halloween-y kitty, put them on an angle more. They're a little bit more. I just eyeball in where my center will be, but... And we'll just, so cute. You can outline everything, which I tend to do. And I might even do some other detail work, like on the ear, on this guy. Each one has their own personality. So as you're working, you're gonna see things you wanna do. I'm gonna outline him, because I think it's very important. I want him to have little whiskers. And like I said, don't be perfect on this, it's whimsical. If you get perfect, then you need to be totally perfect. If you wanna be whimsical and make your edges sketchy, it gives him a little texture to his fur. Don't. I think if, if anything I can teach you is try not to be so perfect all the time. I know it's, unless that's what you're looking for, I believe that you can do beautiful art and it looks more relaxed if it isn't quite so perfect and illustrative. I mean, you can do illustrations, that's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it's fun to just have fun. And look how much cuter that is than if I just outline. Look, here's an outline. Which do you like better? Do you just like the plain or do you like it with a little texture, a little, a little design, a little markings, a little tiger on there. And maybe even put a little fingers. All you have to do is draw little lines, that's it. You see a little lump somewhere, put a little finger on that. Like there, and you got this, and you got that. There you go, and that looks like another little, look how cute that is. So really, don't be afraid to have fun. Now, if you want little ear, fur, just X's, little X's with your pen. How cute is that? Oh my God, he's adorable. And that's what I'm looking for. As soon as I say, see how that doesn't look like anything. Now I'm gonna make a mess and look how much more beautiful it looks. It looks like he's got little fuzzy fur and he's a sweet little kitty. So, but if you like it that way, then you do it that way. Some people like to be illustrative and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just another way of doing your art. But I like to be a little more smushy. Now I will tell you the blue ball I just learned. <laughs> it stays a little moist for a little bit, so be careful. But being that it's whimsical, it doesn't matter. It just adds more to my flavor. And I'm just gonna put little footprints in here and and another little foot. And I'm not even trying to stay in any lines, but I will like to jigger jagger that to make it a little fuzzy. So it has a little more dimension to it. And I think he's really looking sweet. And don't forget his bottom of his belly. And this is a little bit too straight for me, so I gotta make a mess. Look how much nicer it is as a mess. And a little more X's in here. So now what I wanna do is go in with my um, outrageous liquid pearls and I really want to pop these eyeballs. So just a little bit of the outrageous right here and I want them thick. So 
if it's thick, they really grab these, the, the um, personality, I think, of the eyes of the kitty. It really brings you into the picture. You need a focal point, and in, in this particular one, it's going to be our little face. You can even put some of that outrageous on his nose. So cute. You can even put a little under his mouth if you want. You can do anything you want. I think that looks really cute. So if it gets a little bit out of whack, it isn't quite what you want. So all you have to do is come with a toothpick and just kind of clean up the edges and move it around where you want. That's one thing about the liquid pearls, it's manipulable. And I like it, like I say, scratchy. Look how cute that is, huh? What a beautiful birthday card that would be. So anyway, I think that that gives you a really good idea. If you want a little green grass for them to be dancing on, you can just put a little liquid pearls and just scribble them on there. Use a nozzle as a brush and you get a good texture. Look at this. Is that adorable? Come on. <laughs> I'd buy that in two minutes and send that to my grandson for his birthday, for sure. You could even do a sun. You could do anything you want. I would probably like to um, do a little more on this little part here just to accentuate. Don't be afraid to turn. I'm trying not to turn too much so you get a good view, but don't be afraid to turn. And also, don't forget some kitty whiskers. So cute. They don't all have to be real long. Some are short, some are long. So there you go. So I think that it's a great little painting. Oh, it needs some tiger stripes on its tail, that's for sure. And so don't be afraid to give your painting a couple of looks, see, see what, what else does it need. And you put anything in that you love. And I give you permission to play, play in, just create beautiful sweetness. So if you need any extra help or you're having a problem, don't hesitate to contact me. You can message me. I'm on Facebook. I'm Sharon A.K. Harris. And you can look me up on the on the files. And I'm, I'm very approachable and happy to help you. So do not hesitate to ask for any assistance or any questions. There's no such thing as a is a silly question. So until next time, happy painting, everybody. Bye.